This video has been on my list of videos to film for about two years, which is really not that unusual when it comes to my dedicated brand deep dives, considering that they take me ages to research. I always like to make sure that I not only share with you my personal experience, but I always try to talk to my friends who are collectors of the brand. I try to stop by as many boutiques as possible and also talk to people from the brand just so you get a well-rounded picture while watching these videos and not just my two cents. And today's video was quite a tricky one to research because if there is a brand that's more secretive than RMS, it is this one. Today we're going to be discussing everything that there is to know about the secret world of Goyard from their heritage and history all the way to their current range. And I'll share with you my top picks on what pieces to invest in and which ones I would personally avoid. And I will also try to make sure to share with you prices wherever I can because Goyard is one of those brands that you cannot actually buy online. In fact, they will not even share with you prices outside of their stores. You can call, you can ask, trust me, I tried time and time again, and they will just ask you to stop by one of their stores if you would like to learn more about their pieces. But I did some digging and hopefully I'll be able to give you a better understanding on what to expect from Goyard. So if this sounds interesting to you and you'd like to find out everything that there is to know about this iconic French house, then make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet, and keep on watching. Even if you have never heard the brand name Goyard, which I doubt, but for argument's sake, let's say you haven't, I'm sure you are going to be familiar with their Saint Louis tote bag. These are bags that I'm sure you have seen out and about every time you go to a larger city. Every other person seems to be carrying this tote, real or fake, that's a topic for another day, but it is definitely an incredibly popular piece, which means that you're also going to be familiar with their iconic print. And you might have seen the queues outside of their stores because it doesn't matter what time of the day you try to stop by Goyard, there seems to be a queue outside at all hours, which the reason for that is that Goyard you cannot buy online. Their pieces are exclusively available in store. So if you would like to get your hands on one of their pieces, it is going to take you quite a bit of time and you will have to queue up, but this wasn't always the case. Obviously Goyard has been getting more and more popular over the past decade, I would say, but it is a brand that has been around since 1792 to be exact. That's when the brand was established and it was actually originally named Maison Martin after its founder, Pierre-Francois Martin. I hope I pronounced that correctly, which is actually almost 60 years before Louis Vuitton or Moina appeared on the scene. Another reason I'm mentioning these two brands here and why I will draw some comparisons in this video is because similar to Louis Vuitton and Moina, Goyard was also known and loved for their exquisite trunks. So similar to Louis Vuitton and Moina, Goyard also started out by crafting trunks, but what made Goyard stand out and what differentiated this brand from the other two is that they not only focused on the external characters of the trunk and making sure that the trunks were hard wearing and aesthetically designed, but they also wanted to create an all round luxurious experience. So every single detail was meticulously crafted from the inside out. So even the way garments were folded, the way garments were stored inside the trunks was really, really carefully thought out and was designed with a purpose. And this is what Goyard became known and loved for, so much so that in 1834, they were able to afford a flagship on one of the most iconic shopping streets. Actually, to this day, it is one of the most iconic places to have a brick and mortar store, which is Rue Saint-Honoré in Paris. And believe it or not, you can still visit that store. The original Goyard flagship is still on Rue Saint-Honoré in the very same building. I believe the house number is 233. At one point, they changed the numbering on the street, but the store remains in the exact same spot. So if you would like to visit the original flagship, you still can. Now, obviously the store was established in 1834 and the company changed hands a couple of times throughout the next two decades. 
but it was actually inherited in 1853 by Francois Goyard, who had started at the brand as an apprentice at the age of 17 and remained at the helm of the house for the next 32 years. And while the brand was definitely growing, they had a really loyal and devoted customer base who kept going back to the brand, which also included actually local aristocrats and very famous and influential people of the time. It wasn't until 1885 that the house set its eyes on global domination when Francois Goyard's son took over the brand and he spared no expense to take things to the next level. He launched a brand new range of trunks that were meticulously designed to fit the state-of-the-art automobiles of the time. He created the brand's first advertising campaign and also opened three new boutiques in France, as well as a trade office in New York and also in London. And believe it or not, the office was on the very same street where the Goyard flagship in London stands today. So as you can tell, Goyard is extremely proud of their heritage and they like to do things more conservatively, which there is nothing wrong with, but you have to keep in mind that Goyard is quite an old school brand. So that's the kind of traditional luxury you can expect to see from Goyard. But just because they like to do things conservatively, that doesn't mean that they don't believe in innovation. Fun fact, in 1890, Goyard introduced a line of dedicated pet accessories, which was called the Chic du Chien line. And they have been designing accessories for our fur babies ever since then. In fact, in 2008, they opened a boutique across from their historic flagship on Rue Saint-Honoré that exclusively caters to their furry clients. Now, if you've been with me for a while, you may remember me unboxing Pai's very first piece of Goyard, which was a color that was actually purchased at this store on Rue Saint Honoré and I have to say that Goyard's pet accessories are just as exquisitely crafted as anything and everything else the brand offers. Now throughout the 20th century Goyard's popularity only grew and it became sort of the hidden gem of the rich and famous. They are very proud to have supplied some of the most illustrious and influential figures in history with trunks and luggages, including icons such as Coco Chanel, Pablo Picasso, and even Karl Lagerfeld, just to mention a few. But what Goyard is best known for these days is their iconic canvas, which is what I refer to earlier. As Louis Vuitton has their monogram, Goyard has their own canvas print, which is known as the Goyardine canvas. It was introduced in 1892. And if you look close, you can see that the chevron pattern is actually made up of tiny little dots in the shape of the letter Y, which obviously stands for the center letter in the Goyard family name. And speaking of family, the brand was privately owned by the Goyard family until 1998. It is still privately owned today, but it's no longer owned by the Goyard family. Instead, it was acquired back then by a private individual whose name I believe is Jean-Michel Signal, who dedicated the past 20 years to turn Goyard into a global phenomenon by opening stores across Europe, Asia, and the US. He expanded on the original product line. He introduced not only new designs, each one, of course, inspired by the brand's heritage and their pieces in their archive, but he also introduced 11 new colors, including seasonal shades and metallic finishes. And he also opened additional workshops in France. And he he's done all of this without ever sacrificing the original ethos of the brand, which is to offer quality pieces where attention is paid to every single detail from the creation through the acquisition all the way to the use of the final product. Now that you know more about Goyard than even people working for the brand, it's time to move on to the pieces that the brand is best known for today. And we couldn't start anywhere else, but with their iconic Saint Louis bag or Saint Louis tote, which is a piece that I feel like every luxury lover either owns or considered owning at one point. It is the bag that I was talking about at the beginning of the video because it is a piece that 
you will see over and over again if you go to a larger city at least i know that you know living in new york and amsterdam it is a bag that is extremely popular amongst a certain group of people for a good reason because it is an extremely hard wearing but unbelievably lightweight canvas tote and speaking of canvas we do have to discuss what makes Goyard's canvas extremely unique because it is in my opinion one of the best canvases out there I do think that it is superior to Louis Vuitton's canvas now it is no surprise that a trunk maker or a house that was known for trunk making would have a coated linen canvas it is not something that's unique to Goyard however no two canvas is identical each brand has their own unique technique and Goyard's method of producing these extremely hard wearing waterproof yet lightweight canvas materials remains true to the original process which consists of a total of five individual layers of dyeing and Coating. Now compared to Louis Vuitton, Goyard's canvas is more vibrant and it also has a smoother finish to it. And I would argue that it is harder wearing. I can tell you from personal experience, even though I have never had any issues with my Louis Vuitton canvas pieces, I do think that the fact that Pi's color is still in such immaculate condition speaks to how incredibly made Goyard pieces are because Pai is definitely not one of those lap dogs that just sits around all day. He goes swimming, he goes running in the forest, he plays rough with other dogs and he is just a very active little baby. So if his color is still in one piece, not only in one piece, but if it still looks as immaculate as it does today, I think that speaks to the attention to details and how insanely hard wearing Goyard's canvas is. I can compare it to the leather collar that I first bought for Pi from Hermes, which was in bits and pieces after a few months of use. Whereas this piece that you think is more delicate considering that it's made of canvas still looks pretty much brand new with a couple of little dots of paint missing here and there. But other than that, I think that was the perfect test to see how hard wearing Goyard's canvas is. And I can tell you that in my experience, it is, it really is pretty much bulletproof. But going back to the comparison between Louis Vuitton and Goyard, I do think that Goyard's canvas is a little bit more smooth, which is something that you'll either like or you, you'll dislike, but it is a detail that I wanted to point out here. And I do think that Goyard's canvas is more hard wearing with the caveat that the paint might chip a little bit more compared to Louis Vuitton simply because of the finer details that the Goyard canvas features. Now something that I would not recommend however when it comes to Goyard's canvas is getting their pieces personalized because Goyard does offer a customization service where you can have your initials or certain characters painted onto your bag, which will not be quite as long lasting as the canvas itself, considering that when the canvas is dyed and painted, everything gets sealed in with a waxy coat, whereas hand painted details will not go through the same process. So you might find that if you get something hand painted, the base canvas remains in perfect condition as time goes on, but the hand painted details will start chipping, they will look wrinkled and crumpled, and that can give your bags or your pieces quite an uncapped, dirty, and just warning look, which you might not appreciate. So I would personally not advise that you have your Goyard pieces customized, unless they are not pieces that you use on a regular basis. Perhaps it is a trunk that you purchased from the brand that you are keeping as a little keepsake or as a little home decor piece. So obviously it will not be put through quite as much as a Saint Louis tote would. So that is just a word of warning from me. As tempting as it sounds to get your Goyard pieces hand painted, I would personally not do so because it's not something that is free of charge. It does take quite a bit of time. And I just really don't think that it is worth the hassle, especially considering that it will make your pieces not that your, the piece itself will be 
that it will jeopardize the quality of the piece or the piece will not be longer lasting, but it will start looking worn and unkept a lot quicker than if it wasn't for the hand painted details, but that is just my opinion. Anyway, going back to the Saint Louis tote, so it is a larger tote bag that is made of this incredibly hard wearing, but insanely lightweight canvas. It features no lining. The only detail to point out here is the two leather handles. The Saint Louis tote comes in two different sizes. So you can pick it up in a PM size, which starts at $1,600, or in a GM size, which will set you back just under $1,900. I think the exact price for the GM size is $1,890 in dollars. At one point, there was also an extra large size, but I don't believe that size is currently in production but if you are looking for a grab and go tote this might be something that you want to look into personally it's not my favorite just because of how overdone it has become instead i would point you in the direction of a very similar tote that definitely is a nod to the saint louis tote which is called the anjou reversible tote this is something that was introduced in 2016 and it is virtually identical to the saint louis tote the only difference is that it is actually lined with leather. Now the Saint Louis tote, similar to the Anjou reversible, is also reversible in theory, but on the inside it is just a basic canvas. So if you reverse it, all you'll see is this raw canvas finish, whereas the Anjou tote is lined with leather. So you either, you can reverse it, you get a two in one. On one side, you have a solid leather bag, whereas on the other, you do still have the iconic Goyardin canvas, which you can play around with. I personally much prefer the Anjou tote. It is something that I looked at when it first launched. I personally did not purchase it, but I have to admit I was quite tempted by it. And the Anjou tote does come in three different sizes. So you do have the addition of a mini size here, which I have to say is really quite adorable, but it is significantly more expensive considering that this bag also, I mean, at the end of the day, you are getting a leather bag. So the mini size starts at 20, just under 26 hundred dollars and then if you would like something that is slightly safer than both of these tote bags if you're not into an open style grab and go tote like the Saint Louis or a good comparison would be the what is it called what is that Louis Vuitton back called I can never remember it it's not called Kipo because the Louis Vuitton Duffo is called the Kipo is it fits everything or there is a Louis Vuitton tote that is extremely popular too. If you are not into these very sort of open style, casual, unstructured totes, Coyard has a third option for you that again is inspired by the Saint Louis tote, which is the so-called Artois, which is slightly more structured because it does have reinforced corners and also an additional zipper. And this bag is also available in three different sizes. Moving on from the confusing world of Goyard's canvas totes, which again, there are three that you have to pay attention to. It all comes down to personal preference, but if you want something really lightweight, something that is the least expensive choice, you have the option of the Saint Louis tote. Then if you would like something that feels a little bit more elevated, something that features more leather details, well, Actually, you are getting a full on leather bag with the Goyardine canvas being on the inside that you can, of course, choose to reverse. You have the option of the Anjou reversible tote, which is my personal favorite. And then if you would like something with a zip closure and something that looks slightly more structured, then again, you have the Artois tote, which features reinforced corners and a zip closure on top. But anyway, moving on to one of Goyard's more structured, more elaborate bags. Here we have the Saigon bag, which I don't hear many people talking about. Well, the only time I actually hear people talking about it is when this bag gets compared to Hermes's Kelly, which really the only similarities that these bags share is the fact that they both feature a single top handle and that they are slightly tapered, but this bag will add a completely different facet to your collection than a Kelly bag would. So that's there's really no comparison in my personal opinion. When it comes to the Saigon bag, this is a bag that is very much inspired by the brand's trunk making heritage. It features wooden details, wooden rods, 
and even leather reinforced corners, which is something that you will see on a lot of trunks out there and also trunk rivets, which I have to be honest, I do like this bag, but I would like it a lot more without these rivet details because what's interesting about this bag is that the body of the bag is made of this unbelievably lightweight canvas, but then it has these certain details like the wooden rods and the rivets and also the wooden handle that makes this bag quite chunky and substantial, but the whole bag just feels unbalanced because the body of the bag is really light, but when you lift it, you can feel that there is this asymmetrical distribution of weight. I'm not sure if that makes sense, but there is just something off about this bag. I feel like there are just one too many details. I feel like if they got rid of the rod details and the rivets, or maybe if they made the handle out of leather instead of that wooden handle, this bag would feel a lot more elevated and a lot more just balance, but in case you like this bag, it's available in two different sizes. Both sizes feature a removable shoulder strap, which is adjustable, so you can play around with carrying this bag cross body, although I would not suggest that you do so. In my opinion, this bag looks best when it's being carried as a handheld, more formal bag. To me, it definitely feels a little bit pretty and proper, and it cannot be styled quite as casually as a tote bag or as some of the other bags that we'll move on to in just a second. So in my opinion, it is more of a feminine top handle bag, but it is available in two different sizes and it also comes in leather in case you are not a fan of the iconic Goyard brand. Now, if you love the idea of the Saigon bag, but it is perhaps just a little bit too feminine for your liking, you'll be happy to hear that the most recent addition to the Saigon range is the Saigon Tote, which the reason I am not mentioning it in the exact same block as the Saigon Tote is because to me, this bag feels completely different. This is, of course, inspired by the shape of the Saigon range, but it is a lot bigger. It doesn't have the wooden details. Instead, it is just purely inspired by the overall shape, which I feel like if you are looking for more of a casual everyday bag, something you can carry to work, but you can also carry to a more formal occasion, this is a bag I would not overlook. Now, it is quite an expensive piece. I believe this bag starts at $5,000 but it is available in almost every single color Goyard has to offer. Speaking of which, in case you didn't know, or if you're new to Goyard, you might not know this, but back in the day, Goyard had quite a weird pricing strategy where black and brown pieces were significantly less expensive than pieces offered in colors, but that has changed. So now their pricing is consistent. It doesn't matter what color you go for, everything will be the exact same price, which I'm not sure if that's a good or a bad thing because I don't think they've reduced the prices of their pieces in colors. Instead, I think they just increased the pricing of their black and brown pieces. But obviously this tote I think is predominantly available in some of their neutral shades, but it is something that I wanted to mention here. Anyway, going back to pieces inspired by the brand's trunk making, there is a piece that has similar details as the Saigon top handle bag does, but I think it is done in a much more refined fashion, and it is the Vendôme bag. Now, this is a shape that you have definitely seen before. It will perhaps remind you of the Bolide bag from Hermes or the Alma from Louis Vuitton, which is, in my opinion, one of the most underrated bags from both brands. I feel like not many people talk about the Bolide from Hermes or the Alma from Louis Vuitton, even though these bags deserve a lot more attention. And if it is a shape that you appreciate, just know that Goyard also has their own take on it, which is called the Vendome bag. It's currently available in two different sizes, and it also features very, very subtle and very delicate trunk inspired details like the wooden rods and the tiny little studs. And there is also a pouch bag take on it. So similar to Hermes and how they have pouch bags inspired by the original Bolide, Goyard has their own version of the Vendôme cosmetic pouch. But if you are looking for a starter bag from Goyard, but one that isn't quite as often talked about and often seen as 
even the Saigon. The Vendôme, I think, would be a very beautiful, understated, but still fun piece to have in your collection. You guys know that I don't have a Goyard collection. I have bought a handful of pieces from the brand over the years, but most of it I bought as gifts for friends and loved ones, and I really don't own too many Goyard pieces. But there are two pieces that I was tempted by at one point. As I mentioned earlier, I was tempted by the Anjou reversible tote in the large size in black when it first launched in 2016. I looked at that bag, I think the year it launched or shortly after at Bergdorf at the men's store. If I still have the picture on my phone, I will make sure to put it in here. It's something I briefly considered. I did not end up buying it. Another piece, however, that I was a lot more drawn to. Again, it's not something I ever purchased, but I looked at it not only in New York, but also in Miami. And I remember going back and forth between this bag and an Hermes piece. And I remember buying the piece from Hermes, but I can't remember what it was. And I don't want to lie to you, but it wasn't back from Hermes. I can't remember what it was exactly, but I remember going to the Ball Harbor Mall, having dinner there and really thinking about this particular piece, which is one of the brand's more elevated pieces. It's not something that you'll see too often, but if you are looking for a very, very special piece, and if you like things along the lines of the Petite Ma from Louis Vuitton, but you're looking for something a little bit more user-friendly and something that feels a little bit cooler, in my opinion, the so-called Mini Adure. I am pretty sure that's not how you pronounce it, but I'll make sure to leave the name up on the screen here trunk bag would be a good one for you to look into, which is this incredibly crafted hard shell trunk, which believe it or not is surprisingly light. And even though it is decently sized, I mean, it does fit a decent amount, especially for a small bag, it is narrow enough that you can carry it as a clutch bag. And the reason I'm pointing it out here is because the same cannot be said about the next bag that we'll move on to. So if you would like a bag that you can comfortably carry as a clutch bag. This is something that I would encourage you to play around with, but you do also get a strap with this bag, which I think is one of the reasons I was put off this bag. I mean, this was many years ago, so I can't remember exactly, but this was one of the reasons why I wasn't obsessed with this bag, because instead of it featuring an actual shoulder strap, it comes with this sort of basket or harness that you can slide the bag into. Now the harness is really nicely made. As you would expect from Goyard, they paid attention to every single detail. So the harness is also in the shape of a letter Y. But to me, that felt just a little weird. I would have much preferred a strap that actually hooked onto the bag, which I understand why they didn't do that. They wanted to keep the bag very streamlined, clean, boxy, and they wanted to stay true to the heritage of their trunk making, which most of them don't feature hooks. So I get why they did what they did, but personally, it's just not my favorite detail, but this detail does make the bag feel a little bit more casual. So it is more of a versatile piece in my opinion, and it is a really special one. So if you're going to buy one piece from Goyard and one piece only, and you are a fan of small bags, I don't think it gets any better than this one. And then last but not least, if you are looking for a more head turning piece, something that feels a little bit more substantial and a little bit more hardy, I think that's the best way to put it. They do have the so-called cassette trunk bag, which is extremely similar to the idea of the previous bag that we discussed, except it is a little bit more substantial, not only because it is larger in size, but it also features this really large, chunky metal clasp on the front. And this is a bag that actually comes with a removable shoulder strap. So these are two bags that I definitely wanted to point out to you here because I don't think I have ever seen anyone talking about these two bags, even though they are a lot more special than anything else that Goyard has to offer. And last but not least, no video on Goyard can be complete without mentioning their so-called Sina pouch bags. So they do have this range of pouch bags, which initially were used to organize larger totes. Obviously, as you know, at this point, the Saint Louis tote is one of their totes that does not feature a lining. So instead of putting a lining in the bag, they advise their clients to invest in this so-called Sinat, 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 I don't know how you pronounce it, 
pouch bags, which are available in five different sizes in every single color Goyard canvas. So you can use them as bag organizers, but people have also been carrying these as standalone clutch bags, and I do think they do the job. So the sizes, as I mentioned, they come in five different sizes and they range between 15 all the way to 40 centimeters. And this collection also recently inspired the so-called Sena key pouch, which is extremely similar to the Louis Vuitton key pouch, which you know I'm a huge fan of. So if you are looking for an SLG to invest in from Goyard, I would definitely love to put the Sena key pouch on your radar because my Louis Vuitton key pouch is something that I have been getting a ton of wear out of. If you would like to invest in pieces that you know you'll use time and time again, there is nothing better to invest in than a keychain or a key pouch because the one thing you cannot leave your home without is your keys. So, you know, it's something that you will use on a very regular basis. The Goyard key pouch is significantly more expensive than the Louis Vuitton one. But if you're a fan of Goyard, this would be a great piece to add to your collection or start your Goyard collection with. But my friends, this brings us to the end of today's video on everything you need to know about Goyard. Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section. What are your thoughts on Goyard? Is this a brand that you have any personal experience with? If you do, what has your experience been like? Do you have any favorite pieces? Do you have any pros or cons that you would like to point out? And if you have never heard of Goyard or if you don't own any pieces, would you consider adding anything to your personal collection from the brand? And if there are any other houses that you would like me to do a deep dive on, make sure to leave those in the comment section below too. And while you're down there, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. I really appreciate you being here and watching and I cannot wait to see you back here with a new video next week.